fulfill your purpose. Because the saddest thing at a funeral or at a cemetery is not the death of a person, but it's the death of a dream, the death of, a, of, of goals unfulfilled. Yes, sir. That's the saddest part. Yes, sir. Because we're all going to die. Every one of us will taste death. Yes. Every one of us. Whether we just close our eyes or whether we're rapture, this body's going to taste death. It's going to be left behind. But how sad that the, the, the fulfillment of purpose was not, was not carried out. This one thing I do. You forget your sickness by focusing on divine health. Yes. Monique was sharing about her mother and father were visiting here from Lubbock, Lubbock Texas. Lukenbach, Texas. And uh, her mother came here and she's diabetic or she's doctors diagnose her with diabetes, but she is whole. Watch your decree. Because if we're standing and believing for for healing and wholeness Hallelujah. over our families, we gotta say, she's got no, she's not, she is whole. Yeah. Doctors have given her these, she's got symptoms of diabetes, but she's whole. Yeah. And she came from Lubbock Lub Lub without her insulin shots and what have you. I mean, she's she has been diagnosed to the point where she has to have uh, uh, what do you call it, the blood dialysis. dialysis. Okay, that's serious. But she came here for the weekend and didn't bring her insulin and shots and what have you. Monique's brother called, she said, he said, well, good luck with mom because she didn't have her insulin. And she goes, well, what does that mean? He goes, good luck. She, she's like, what? <laughs> but what does that mean? And, and she, her blood sugars, you know, depend on her, you know, the, the, what she eats and what have you, da, da, da. Anyway, to make a long story short, she made it to the weekend. She got back home. She checked her blood levels. They were way down. They were, they never spiked. They never, I mean, it was just a perfect weekend. God protected her. And because she refused to give, give any, any thought to fear and to give in to that. You focus on, forget about your sickness and, and focus on health, on divine health. Everybody say, this one thing I do. The Word of God is a seed that can be planted in your mind that can thwart every bad thought you may have. The Word is a substitute for the negative. Anything you can imagine, you can do it. In accordance to Genesis chapter 6 where the Bible says that the people, God said, God looked at the people that were building the Tower of Babel and, and God said, now anything that they imagine they can do, they can do it. Amen. There is a power in our minds that God has given us, and the world for years has tapped into this. Every, every, uh, you got speakers out there, the motivational speakers, and they're making tens of thousands of dollars tapping into this resource, and the church is saying, that's of the devil, we don't want to talk about that, let's just lay hands on people and pray for them. Yeah, we lay hands on them, they fall out, they get goosebumps, they get sweaty, they get all whatever, and they walk out the door, and on Monday morning, they wake up and they're the same person. Because there's been no transformation. Because the transformation happens when you start thinking differently. Even, uh, Derek, even in, uh, what is it called? Uh, 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 in a thank you narcotics anonymous and he's not ashamed to talk about it because because he's come a long ways and God delivered him from narcotics and every time I'm around him he's like man it's just I love it but he had to disconnect from every person that fed that crazy thought of wanting that, that lifestyle and he talks about it and he says I can't be around those people I have nothing to do I have no no, no uh, uh, agreement factor. No, no, nothing. No dealings with them. Amen. You have to break that that connection, and you have to change, transform your thinking, and that's the power of your mind. Focus is the key to removing everything else in your life that does not belong. But you have to harness your thoughts and your mind. When we attempt to figure something out without the Holy Spirit, it always leads to confusion. Yeah. Yes. And the Bible says Satan is the author of confusion. But let me just tell you, Satan is not alone because there's a lot of people who are the author of their own confusion. Thought without consulting the Holy Spirit is like shooting in the dark. 
You're just, a, you're hoping that you'll, that you'll hit the mark. Some of you are hoping for a miracle, but you're not consulting the Holy Spirit because you're afraid. Watch this. You're afraid of what Holy Spirit, which is synonymous with wisdom, the Proverbs. Proverbs says, exalt her and she shall promote thee. Wisdom and Holy Spirit. I, I Listen, I challenge you. To read the book of Proverbs. And every time you see wisdom. Put Holy Spirit in there. It will change your life. It will change your life. Exalt her and she shall promote you. When you get up in the morning. When you go make a, a business decision. Exalt her. The Holy Spirit. And just say. Holy Spirit, what should I do? Should I should I should I buy this? Should I buy should I sell this stock? Should I should I go go with this company? Should I should I should I go knock on this door? Should I call this client? When Zena was up here, on, she took a day off to help when we were making preparations. I said, Zena, the Holy Spirit said, now is the time to call all the clients that told you no. And I hope she was obedient because that's an instruction from the Lord. And I don't have to hear from her saying, yes, Dr. I, I, I closed the biggest account that same day. No, the, the, the instructions, see, God only expects our one act of obedience can lead to a lifetime of blessing. One act, just one act. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Focus is the power to neutralize everything that God does not want in your life. Focus, focus, focus. Gives you the ability. Every what, what is when something is neutralized, it means it has no power. It has no. You know, you know why? This is this is what I do with with some people that 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 that, that you know. When you don't know how to deal with certain people that have hurt you. You're not at that place where you want to say, oh, the Bible says, love your, your enemies. You're a liar when you say, I love them. You know you're lying because you cannot stand them. <laughs> Tell the truth. This, 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 is, this is what I do. I go, I'm not there yet, but right now I'm just, I'm going to neutralize this. They just go into neutral. And there, there is, there is, I don't hate them. But I don't wish them harm. I don't wish them well, but I don't wish them harm. It's a neutral. And, and I'm telling you, when you get into that place, then you're, you're pliable for the Holy Spirit to finish the work. But see, when we, when we go out of religiosity and say, praise the Lord, I love you, sister. And you know on the inside, you're like going, I love you, sister. <laughs> Or you send the email, praise the Lord, I just wanted you to know that I was praying for you. <laughs> Hallelujah, God bless you, hope all is going well, we haven't seen you at church. Oh, we never do. Send. <laughs> Neutralize everything else, and it gives you focus on what's important. Yes, Amen. You know what? If you, if you have trouble loving, then cultivate the love with the ones that are with you. Yes. This one thing I do. That's why I was telling you last week, it's not a demonic thing. That's why the Apostle Paul was, was, was explaining to us that it's not, it's not some kind of a demonic thing that we can, we can go get delivered from. If that were the case, we could just have a huge service. And just fill it up with every wife abuser, every pedophile, every murderer, and everybody that's just evil, and we could just deliver them all. In the name of Jesus, every demon has got to flee, everybody's gone, be delivered, poof. But what happens? The pedophile goes home. And in his mind, it's twisted. And this is the insatiable desire that he has for that twisted stuff that is not normal. Look at this young man that went from being a prince in the king's court of his high school 
to being a murderer. What do you think? You think, oh, the devil is just working overtime. No, he's not. I just have to tell you, the devil was, how, if, if you believe in Jesus and his power, if you believe that Yeshua took the keys to the kingdom of hell and that his blood overcame the power of Satan and he beheld the devil falling like a bolt of lightning and he came to destroy the works of the devil, why do you still keep giving credit to the devil and his works? He has no authority, especially in the in the house of God, in the household of faith. Amen. So it's not a devil. It is our own minds that are tricking us and tripping us up. Yes. Well, I take authority over that, doctor. Come on, take authority over it. See if I just... <laughs> it's not going to shut me up because I'm trying to tell you the truth. You shall know the truth. Yes. See, but you don't want to know it because in your mind you're going, so it's easier to blame the devil and not me. I didn't do it. It was the devil. The devil made me made me do all that and I, I was trying really hard you weren't trying you drove there Come on. it was a 25 miles 30 miles to get to where you were going to fornicate oh. what you mean you got you slipped come on somebody Okay, uh, after I watched uh, um, the movie The Matrix, remember The Matrix? Yeah. I could relate so much about what I see happening in the church because people are caught in the Matrix and don't even know it. They think that they're living life and they're going along and they're, and they're just this, this program that's just been programmed and they don't even realize they're stuck in some pod somewhere waiting to be resurrected. Waiting for their mind, for their own minds to be awakened. Let this mind be in you. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. Why was Paul praying this prayer because he did some, he was a serial killer, he was an anti-Semitic, he was anti-Jew, he killed the Jews. He not only killed them, he persecuted them. The Apostle Paul that so many revere so highly, he wrote, he was instrumental. God, he, he was a channel. He must have cleared something in his mind to pin all these words. He must have gotten some kind of mental cleansing to be able to channel the revelation. Because the reason, you know, the reason that you're not getting, you're, the reason that you're not getting the revelation because you should be able to get, what I'm preaching should be more of a confirmation than just an announcement. You should be going, amen, that's what I was feeling in my spirit this week, doctor. That's what I was seeing. That's what I was hearing. That's what... Well, that's not what T.D. Jakes was preaching. That's not what Josh Myers was preaching. Well, maybe you need to pray for their minds. Oh, yeah, don't touch your... Don't preach this. I'm just messing with you. I'm just, saying, I I'm just telling you that... That the Word of God is alive and it's out here. It's in the atmosphere and you just got to grasp it. You got to get hold of it. The Apostle Paul said something quite interesting in the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 25. I thank God through Christ our Lord. He had an attitude of gratitude. I thank God through Christ our Lord. So then with the mind. Come on. Watch this. Look at his verbiage here. So then, with the mind, I myself. Can you say those words with me? So then, with the mind. With the mind. Come on, everybody say it. So then, with the mind. So then, with the mind. I myself. I myself. Okay. Watch this. I mean, look at this. this is the Apostle Paul. Look at look at his. 
cognition to the the connection to the mind not just overly spiritualizing something but really making a connection to the learned part of walking with God Jesus was a, a, a Jewish man who studied the Torah he studied in the tabernacle since he was 12 years old and when he was only 12, he freaked out the, the guys in the temple. They were like, what in this kid? Because that's what the whole, the whole study of Torah is just, just digging and digging and digging in all the different translations. Because the scripture, you have to understand about the scripture. That each word has a meaning, but then each word has a meaning within each letter of each word. So the word is profound. That's why it is, his greatness is unsearchable. We will never tap into the fullness of the word. It's, it's mind-boggling. That's why when, God, when the Holy Spirit leads to look at a particular word in the Greek and or the Hebrew, it just, it's, it floors, it just, we're just sitting there going, wow. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Then verse 15, he said, for what I'm doing, I do not understand. Sometimes what we do, we do not understand. For what I will to do, what I will to do, that I do not practice. Does anybody relate to the Apostle Paul? The things that I want to do, that I should do. Amen. Being faithful to the house of God. Yes. Getting in the scriptures. And, and, not, and listen, it's not about just, don't go, don't go the, the polar opposite and just become a, a, a so heavenly minded you're no earthly good. Come on. I'm talking about, because, because it's.